Conversation Tree Press is a new fine press publisher based in Ontario, whose first publication is J.M. Barry's fantasy classic Peter Pan. The book is issued in a limitation of 726 copies divided across three states. That's 500 standard copies, 200 deluxe copies, and 26 lettered copies. At the time of recording, the lettered state is already out of print, but the press's proprietor, Tony Gear was kind enough to send on loan review copies of the standard and deluxe states for the purpose of taking a look at them here. My plan is to take a look first at the standard state, and then we'll see what upgrades come when one steps up to the deluxe copies. The binding for this edition has been handled by Ludlow Bookbinders, and for this standard state they've provided a slipcase, which is covered in this apple green book cloth with a fairly tight weave. It's blocked in gilt on the side with an illustration by the edition's illustrator Charles Vess, and we see we have here an image of Peter riding on the back of a swan. In terms of the physical construction of the case, it's made from heavy duty board so it feels nice and rigid and robust, and the corners are very neat and sharp. Everything seems to be well made as we would expect from the work of Ludlow. Turning to the inside of the slipcase, it is lined in black and if we put our fingers in there, we feel that this lining has a suede-like texture, so it's nice and soft in there and there'll be no problems with abrasion putting the book in and taking it out again. So altogether, first impressions are positive. This feels like a well-made slipcase. Now we come to the edition itself. It is quarter bound again in this green book cloth, and that is over these paper sides manufactured by a company called Rossi 1931. I think this paper is pretty special. It is densely patterned in this floriated style. It has these brightly colored birds also in the pattern. And if we allow it to catch the light, we see elements of the design are also picked out in gold. It's really quite striking. It looks to me a little bit like a firework going off. And I think it's fitting for a book so vibrant as one about Neverland. The rest of the binding is in a sense a bit more conventional. So we have, as I said, this green book cloth. Flipping over to the spine, we see that we have it blocked in gilt the title, the author's name and the illustrator's name. And then down here, the press mark of Conversation Tree Press has been blind stamped. Finishing up this exterior presentation, we can see that we're going to have a ribbon marker. It's a green ribbon marker and we have striped end bands in green and yellow, and all three edges of the text block have been trimmed. I should say that just like the slipcase, the boards that have been used in the book itself, again, feel very uh, heavy duty and rigid, and so the book feels solid, it feels well made in the hand. Now we open the book onto end papers, which are a fairly plain by comparison, black on white, but they've been illustrated again by Charles Vess with these hand-drawn maps. And the end papers at the front and the back of the edition are different. So here at the front, we have a map of Kensington Gardens. And if we flip over to the end of the book, we have a map of Neverland. Then we press on to the title page. Again, this has been hand-drawn by Charles Vess. Um, we have the title of the edition, we see Conversation Tree Press 2023. This standard state is printed on Munk and Pure Rough Ivory paper. Despite the name, this is a relatively smooth paper. It feels like a thoroughly modern fine press paper. It has pretty good opacity and a nice slightly off-white colouring. And here we have the contents page, and we see that this edition is going to contain in fact, two separate tales. So the first of those is Peter Pan in Kensington Gardens. This is a short story which originated as a series of chapters in a longer work, and they marked Peter Pan's first appearance in literature. And then we have a longer work, a novel in its own right, Peter and Wendy, which is an adaptation of J.M. Barrie's stage version of Peter's tale. And this is a more mature work which contains all of the elements that most viewers will associate with Peter Pan. The book contains an introduction 
by scholar Maria Tatar. It gives a bit of an overview into the book's place in culture, but also a bit about the book's genesis and also picks out some of the major themes of the stories. And then we go into the tales themselves. Each of the two tales starts with a title page, again, hand-drawn by Charles Vess in pen and ink. Here we get our first look at the general typographic design of the edition. Every chapter opens with a pen and ink illustration by Charles Vess. There are 23 chapters, so if we include the title page, the title page for each of the stories in the illustrated map end papers, that means we have a total of 28 of these pen and ink illustrations throughout the edition. And that's on top of the nine color plates that we'll get to in a moment. So it's quite a richly illustrated book by fine press standards. As far as the text is concerned, the main text is set in a face called Austin and the entire edition across all three states has been printed letterpress by Nomad Letterpress. And so regular viewers of this channel will know to expect, therefore, that the quality of reproduction is quite superb. Now we'll flip through along the way, we'll doubtless see some more of these pen and ink illustrations, but I also want to show you the other type of illustration in the edition, which are these color plates that again have been provided by Charles Vess. Vess says that one of his influences was Arthur Rackham, that great illustrator of the 20th century. And I think you can see that influence in the style of the illustrations. So we have this very clear, clean contour, the delicate coloration, but Vess also has his own style, which gives the images, I think, a bit more of a modern edge. And in any case, that influence makes him superbly suited to illustrate a work such as Peter Pan, um, which is a work of fantasy, and one can very much see why he made a name for himself illustrating this type of work. In this standard state, the images are printed with a white border, and then we have a decorative border printed around the edge of the images. So I'll flip through and we'll have a chance to see a few more of those illustrations. Here is the title page for the second story, Peter and Wendy. As usual, the book ends with a colophon page. It's signed by illustrator Charles Vess, although these editions haven't been numbered. So that's the standard state. Now let's take a look at what upgrades we get when we go to the deluxe state. Putting the deluxe and standard states alongside each other, we right away see one difference is that the book cloth used on the standard state is a little bit lighter than the one used here over on the deluxe state. We also see different gilt designs blocked here on the sides of the slip cases. So here on the deluxe state, in fact, we have the title page from the first of the two stories, Peter Pan in Kensington Gardens. That makes more sense when we flip the deluxe state slip case over and we see on the other side, we also have the title page illustration from the other story, Peter and Wendy. Another difference is that the deluxe state slip case has these rounded ends which means that it neatly covers the spine of the edition. And then as a final difference, we still have that black suede-like lining, but now it wraps slightly out and makes a very nice trim around the edge of the book. It feels a little bit luxurious when we put our hand there to slide the book out of the slipcase to have a little bit of this suede-like material poking out. Otherwise, it's still a nice sharp case made from nice rigid board everything feels very solid. 
Of course, when we go to a deluxe state of an edition, one of the main upgrades we expect is a different binding material, and that's the case here. So now we have this full leather binding in this green leather, which has quite a nice grain to it, and it's blocked on the front board in gilt with that same illustration that we saw on the side of the standard state slipcase. So we don't miss out on that illustration if we take the deluxe state. The spine of this edition is hooked. We have these five raised bands. It's blocked in gilt with this little vignette illustration, the title, author, and illustrator. The title set against this wine red background. It's a very classic, austere looking binding. And I know that will fit in well in the libraries of a lot of collectors. And just like before, we have the conversation tree press mark blind stamped there. I thought this was a nice touch because if you're going to have such a classic looking binding, you don't always want some corporate branding on the spine of your book. But here it's very subtle, nice and hidden away there. The top edge of the text block is gilded and we now have end bands that are in red and also a red ribbon marker. Anybody who dabbles in art will know that red is the complementary colour of green, so that sits really quite nicely together with this green leather binding material. Just like the standard state, the book feels very solid. Of course, the leather makes it even more hard wearing, so it altogether feels like Ludlow have done a good job again with the binding of this state. One thing you might be a little bit worried about though, is that we lost that nice rossy paper that was on the standard state. But fear not, because when we open this deluxe state, we get two sheets of it here on the end papers. And likewise, if we go to the rear of the book again, we get that nice rossy 1931 paper on the end papers. So we don't miss out on that at all. What then becomes of the maps? Well, in this deluxe state, the maps have been bound in as folded sheets. And so here we have an example of one of those. We can fold it out. And there is the map of Peter Pan in Kensington Gardens. Notice that the map spans two pages, but it's been bound in as a trifold. That's really a minor detail, but I thought it was a nice touch. It makes it feel a little bit more like we're unfolding an actual map. And I think it's those little touches that can make a big difference. The substantive contents of the deluxe state are the same as those in the standard state, but the paper has been upgraded. So instead of that 120 GSM Munken paper, we now have 160 GSM Magnani paper. The paper also has a slightly rougher texture, which gives it a more tactile feel. And of course, by virtue of being heavier weight, it also has slightly better opacity. So in my mind, a definite upgrade on the paper front. One thing I didn't mention before is that there's a bit of a bite to the letterpress printing. So one can feel a bit of a texture to where the text is put on the page. And in this deluxe state, I think that's slightly more obvious, perhaps because the heavier paper is a little bit better able to take that bite. And then the other big change that comes with this deluxe state is the way that the illustrations are presented. We have the same complement of illustrations, but now instead of being directly bound into the book, they are firstly printed on heavier paper to begin with. So this is 150 GSM paper, whereas previously they were printed on 130 GSM. And they have been tipped in on top of this brown um, laid paper sheet that is bound into the volume. I prefer this a lot, I have to say. I think the brown is a more subdued background for the illustrations, and I think that helps to channel your attention into the images itself, rather than being distracted by the border that's around them. So to my mind, that was another nice upgrade for the deluxe state. While we're here in this deluxe state, let's take a look at some more of those illustrations, so you can get a better sense of how they're presented in the deluxe state of the edition.
And just as before, we have a colophon page, which is signed by Charles Vess. So that is Peter Pan by J.M. Barry, the maiden publication of the Conversation Tree Press. I really had a lot of fun with this edition. Ludlow and Nomad have both done great jobs, as one might expect. So these books feel very well made. But I also think there's a coherence of design vision from Conversation Tree Press itself. There are some bold elements like the paper used here in the covering, where the design is a little bit more traditional. Everything gels together very nicely. And there are a lot of smart production decisions, I think, that have gone into the books. If we think about the two states individually, the standard state gives you all of the substantive content. So you get the letterpress printing, you get all of the illustrations, you get this nice striking design with that paper that I like so much. Also, the book feels well made. It has those nice heavy duty boards. And I think it offers pretty good value for money at a retail price of $275. If one compares that, for example, to a typical limited edition from the Folio Society, you'd probably pay about 50% more for a book that is not printed letterpress and probably doesn't have the same quality of materials being used. On the other hand, those who pay to upgrade to the deluxe state, I think also won't be disappointed. There are quite a lot of upgrades packed into this edition. So we have a better slip case. We have the leather binding with that nice classic design. I really like the way the maps and the illustrations were presented in this deluxe state. And we have also that nicer paper, the slightly heavier and more tactile paper. The retail price of the deluxe state is $775. And at the time of recording, both of these states are still in print and can be ordered directly from Conversation Tree. So in an exciting debut from the press, they've already published one additional book that's Fawn by Joe Hill, and they've announced a number of other projects which should be coming down the pipeline. So I think this will be a press to watch in the future.